Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and we are going to make this beautiful rustic leather bag. Now, one big point of this video is not necessarily this specific bag. The point of this video is the elements of a bag, purse, clutch, pouch, it's all the same thing. We're going to drop in a gusset, we're going to hand sew this, and on that note, we can hand sew on our kitchen table, looks just like a machine stitch. We're going to set a buckle, easy enough, quick release and some spots. Now, again, the point of this video is more the elements of the bag instead of this specific purse. Because I always say, sky's the limit, well that's exactly right. I made this bag with exactly the same elements and tools as right here. So once we get the feel of that, like I said, sky is literally the limit. Now, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below, we've got links there. Going to take you straight to our website. So, with any project, our first step is our pattern. So let's step over here and get that knocked out. Now, set up and ready to go. In fact, this is a great pattern. It's super easy to work out because once we pick our dimensions, you'll see everything's going to fall into place. Now, your purse, your call on size. But for this, we're going to go seven by seven. Make it super easy, two inch gusset, okay? First thing, notice our panel goes all the way around. That makes this super easy. So let's do this. Let's start on this edge. We're going to come down seven inches. Now, pattern paper, copy paper is not the best way to go, but if I make a mistake, I wad it up, I toss it, I'm out nothing, right? If it's a good one though, I'll transfer this over to our, our plastic sheeting, which makes a great pattern material. All right, so I ran my pin across there twice. We're going to score that. So when we pull this up, we can fold it, see just what our pouch looks like. Seven inches, easy enough. Now, we've got a two inch, two inch gusset here. Easy. So right here, let's come out two inches. Basically our fold right there. Score that, good. And pin, what a mess. You know what, let's clean that off before it gets even worse. All right, we could certainly use pencil, but it's hard to see on camera. All right, so now we're on our back panel. Easy enough, seven by seven. So we're coming out to 16. Now, to save us a little time, I went ahead and cut our pattern paper here at seven width, and then I folded it. Gave us a good center line, okay? So, backside, gusset two inches, so we need two inches for our flap to fold over. There we go, okay, easy enough. Now our front panel. Let's go ahead and br bring this down to seven inches just to keep everything clean and easy. And there we go. Now, we don't want to get confused here because it's easy enough to do. On our flap, again, your purse, your call, you can make this flap any length. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this one and a half inch short of the end of our pouch. So let's come into right there. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and cut this at 23 and a half inches. All right, that'll keep us from getting confused. So we can take that piece and move that out of our way. All right, so easy enough there. Now for our closure here, we have a LOX quick release. Secure closure and easy to add, but easy release. On our flap, from our end, we're going to come out one and one half inches. There we go, okay, easy enough there. Now on this side, this can be a little confusing because we have to measure from our bottom bend, which actually is right there. Now, we need one and a half inches from here to our edge and one and a half inches down. So really, from this bend, three inches up. There we go, okay? You know what, this pattern is almost done. We wanna add our round corners and our spots. So let's cut this. And before we do that, let's go ahead and fold this. And our last bend, all right. Very cool, that looks good. Everything clean and square, easy enough. All right, now let's fold this in half because we're going to do our round corners and set our spots or, or mark for our spots. Now we need a round corner here. I don't really have a template big enough to do that, but this makes a great point because our kitchen, <laughs> our kitchens are full of great templates. So all I need to do is lay this in. Now, I wanna mark on my outside edge, I wanna mark away from my bend. So I'm just going to drop that right there. There we go. Okay, easy enough on that. 
Now let's cut that. There we go. Okay. Toss that aside. Well, that looks good. Very cool. We've got a nice end cut there. Now for our spots, same thing. We're going to fold this over so everything's symmetrical, but let's go ahead and make a mark right on our center line, about a quarter of an inch in. That's going to be for this spot right in the middle. Now with our wing divider, and this is a great tool. In fact, we can make our curves with this, but what I'm going to do is give my spots three quarter inch spread. I've got that set at three quarter. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to mark one hole out. Either side matters not because we're going to fold this. Now camera, it's going to be hard for the camera to see that, but this just needs to be about a quarter of an inch in. We can measure each spot from the edge, but in all honesty, not really necessary because we're simply going to use our wing divider and work our way around. Okay. So let's press good there. Bring that around. There we go. All right, coming up to our flap, let's go ahead and go over our flap. That'll look very good. All right, last one marked. There we go. Okay, this piece virtually ready to go, but let's do this. Let's, let's work with a little good pattern maintenance here. Holes where I actually want to punch a hole, I'm going to circle in black. Now that's going to make sense now because for our spots, Really don't want to punch a hole here because if we do, spot's not going to sit in there. So I'm going to use a nice bright red Sharpie so my eyes can see that I just need a, a mark here and not a punch. There we go. Okay. Last mark in. Let's jump over to our gusset. But before we go there, let's do this. Let's mark in 23, one half inches, total length by seven, total width. I'm going to write in cut one. All right. That'll make sense here very shortly. Okay. So let's set that piece of our pattern aside. That is ready to go. Now let's jump over to our gusset because again, our measurements are all but there, but we've got to do something a little bit differently here. All right. Let's mark in. We're going to come down seven inches. There we go. Let's square and mark our bottom. And then we're going to come out one inch on either side. That's going to give us our two inches. So let's mark there and draw that in. Okay. So there's our basic gusset shape, but we're going to sew this. So we need room for our stitch and we need room for this to bend around right here. Okay. So let's go out. Our stitch line is one eighth of an inch in from our edge and we need about an eighth of an inch for a bend. So let's add one quarter of an inch to the three sides where we will sew. Right up here, that's our throat. So no worry there. And one across our bottom, squared along our edges, one quarter of an inch out. There we go. Okay, so that's our actual cut size. So let's cut that out. Okay, last cut. There we go. Okay, so this is actually going to be seven and one quarter inch by two and one half inch. All right. And right here, let's cut two because we'll need one for each size. Now we're going to drop in our gusset or our billet holes here, but let's get our, our billet, measure that out. Then we'll drop that in. Those marks literally will fall into place. So I'm going to pick this up, get our straps out. We only have three of those to do. So we're almost there. Okay. For our billet, this is going to be easy enough because just about every measurement we're going to make is either one inch or two inch. Very simple. So I've got a piece here, one inch by five, six inches long. Let's start at one end and we're going to bring in a mark one half of an inch. Now our second mark, one inch in from there. Easy enough. Now we're going to have a bend here. This is where our strap is going to bend around our D ring. I don't want too much room there so that that can work through. But at the same time, I don't want so little that it has no movement. So let's give that two inches. There we are. And again, one inch. Easy enough. All right. So let's trim that down. We're going to trim to within a half of an inch of our last mark. That gives us room for a round end punch. So let's draw that in. There we are. Okay. Now what's our length here? Five inches. Easy enough. One inch 
by five inches, cut two. Okay, let's circle that. And then we're gonna jump back over to our gusset. Cool, easy enough there, all right? Now, on our gusset, I want my D to come in just a hair short of the top of my throat. So, with this, let's take our D, fold that around. There we are. All right, I'm gonna put that right to the side. It's a little tall, so let's bring that in. Okay, nice, I've got about a quarter of an inch there. So let's make our first mark there. Come down one inch, just like our gusset or our billet. There we go, mark that. Now, circle that in black because those are pole punches. Now, down here, I always forget to do this because I'm so used to cutting this when I cut my leather. But down here, we're gonna, we're gonna bend this in. So let's do this, and we could absolutely measure this out, but I'm going to roughly cut right there. It's a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, because down here that gives us plenty of room for our bin, but what that's going to do is come around, make a very perfect corner, all right? Easy enough. So, our billet and our gusset ready to go. Let's set those aside. Now, last two straps, we are almost there. With these, this can look a little confusing, but it really isn't. Because again, we're using all the same measurements. On this end, one inch spread, or one inch spread between our rivets or our screws, and a two inch spread because this piece is going around our D just like the other. So on this end, let's square these. We're going to come in one half of an inch, easy enough. Now, one inch spread on our screws. So let's drop in a mark at one inch. Two inch bend, easy enough. There we are. And again, one inch. All right, easy, very cool, because both of these, one end is gonna go around a D-ray. So we're almost there. Easy measurements from here out. Let's jump over and do our buckle billet first. Because notice, one inch spread, two inch spread. Still, all the same measurements. So let's flip one piece around. Going to come in half inch, one inch. Two inch, one inch. Same as the other end. Now, I can punch an oblong on either end, but let's go ahead and draw in an oblong on one end or the other. That way we know exactly what that strap does. All right, round in as well. Now, round in there, not necessary, but it makes a nice touch. We won't see it, but it's a nice detail. Round in there, okay. Let's go ahead and round in on this one while we're at it, okay. Now, when we jump over to our, our tongue strap, that's going to go through our buckle, and we're gonna have a little bit of adjustment there. What I tend to do is come in about one and a half, maybe two inches from the tip to my first hole, or technically my last hole, because I want, if somebody's on that last hole, I want that strap still to be able to go through our buckle. So let's come in one and a half inches, and we're gonna add, let's say five marks at one inch apart. Easy enough, and we can add as many holes as, they want, as we want to there. So let's circle those, and our last two marks. All right, very nice. Okay, now measurement on this. Looks like it can be confusing, it isn't. On me, from just below my waist, up over my shoulder, to just below my waist on my backside, it's about 45 inches, easy enough. Doesn't have to be exact, we're gonna have some room for adjustment here, but 45. So let's start over here. One third of that is 15 inches. So I need 15 inches from bend to bend. So let's measure from there, two and a half out, two and a half out, okay? So this strap needs to be 20 inches by one inch. We're going to cut one, okay? Beautiful, that piece is done and ready. Now let's jump over here. Two thirds of that 45 distance is 30 inches. But what I want is for my bend on this end to roughly my second hole. I'd like for my buckle to sit in my second hole. That gives whoever's wearing it a little room in and some room out, okay? So 30 inches. Right there, we've got four and a half. Right there, we've got two and a half, so seven inches. So this piece is going to need to be 
37 inches by one inch, and we're going to cut one. Very cool, our patterns are clean, tight, look good. So follow me to chapter two, we are gonna start cutting this beautiful leather.